What's up? Welcome back. Uh, this is Entry 6 in the Systematic Trading Journal. I've had a really good week. Um, I fixed some problems, found some new problems. Uh, so I'm going to just talk about, a little bit about that right off the bat, and then towards the end I will show the new code and what I came up with and how I think it's working. But to just share a little bit about this process so far, um, in doing this, I've, I'm probably pushing myself a little bit further than I would otherwise, which is what I wanted. And it's it has solved some problems, but it seems like every time I take a step forward, I have to go back and redo something because I'm finding something else that I did before that needs to be looked at again. So, um, in that vein, what I've been doing to analyze if the code is right, to align my backtest results with the excursion analysis, is looking at the trade count when I do a backtest. <clears throat> so, when you do the excursion analysis, the way I, I showed how we determined the stop, you know, we, we ran the whole history of trades with no stop with the simple code that just um, follows the entry and exit. When you analyze and assume a stop, you're also assuming that you do not take another trade if stopped out until you would have taken the next trade without a stop. So that was getting the code right to do that, which I think I've done. But as I've been watching the trade count, I've noticed that even when I did add a stop, had the code right, my trade count is still off. And what I've discovered is Trading Blocks has a built-in feature that's like an entry day uh, stop loss that it will um, that has some parameters that you can adjust to affect the sensitivity because you, when you're looking back in the past at open, high, low, close data, you don't necessarily know what order they occurred in. So if you have a an entry or a stop, you're not sure when those prices occurred. Um, so there, there's like a parameter you can adjust uh, to affect the sensitivity of that. So maybe you don't get stopped out on the entry day as much as um, you might if, if you adjust the data differently. I'm not explaining it real well, but in any case, um, I just want to show the test results in a few different ways just to show how I kind of came up with what I came up with um, that hopefully will be clear um, as I explain. So this test right here, number five, this is the original code uh, with that entry day retracement parameter set to on with a certain sens sensitivity level and it doesn't really matter for this, but what I just wanted to show is here so here's the original test. This is use and hold ATR stops is false. So this is the same thing that we were essentially looking at before doing the excursion analysis on. You can see the number of trades here. Now this is more than the number of trades I showed before. That's because we have additional data. I'm just doing this on an ongoing basis. So if I ran a test a week ago, there's going to be more trades in here now because there's been trades over the last week. So here is the original code with stops turned on. And you can see we have like some 2,500 more trades. What that's coming from is getting stopped out. Both the moving averages are still going in the same direction on the next day, so the trade gets entered again. That is not what we want to see if, we're, if we want to achieve the results we saw uh, with the excursion analysis. So that's why I had to modify the code. Now, this is the same thing again, and this is with that entry day retracement parameter turned off. So this is, this is assuming that you cannot get stopped out on the initial day, um, and you can see here uh, we have less trades than we did before here with that turned off. So I'm just doing this to kind of show how this led me in the direction of of getting the code the way it is, 
and helping how I help how I went about this analysis process. Okay, so let me now show what the new code looks like. Um, just for a reminder, this is the original code here, and this is this is kind of the setup that triggers our trade. If the short moving average is greater than the short moving average from yesterday, and the long moving average is greater than the long moving average from yesterday. And here is our new code. Notice the, the top part is the same, but if we go down, we now have this additional qualifier. If the short moving average from yesterday is less than or equal to the short moving average from the day before, or the long moving average from yesterday is less than or equal to the long moving average from the day before. And so what this is doing is, this is looking for those moving averages to have a change from going up or down. And what we want is to see either one or the other of the moving averages change directions the day before we get our entry signal. And what that's going to do is prevent um, a trade from being re-entered after it gets stopped out. So now, let's go back. Um, now these two are, this is the, um, this is the new code once again, we've got use and hold ATR stops true and false. So it's a step test. I tested it both ways. So if we don't have the entry day retracement parameter turned on, you can see now we have the same number of trades using stops and not using stops, which is what we want. And then here, this is the same thing with um, the entry day retracement turned on. So you can get stopped out on the day of entry. And you can see here now with the stops, we have less trades than we would have uh, without stops. And this is something that I discovered um, that I didn't know about that I probably should have with trading blocks. Um, the reason there are less trades here with the stop than without is because what trading blocks assumes is if the opening price on the day you're supposed to trade, if the price is below your stop, you just don't trade which makes sense. I mean, if you were trading this manually, um, you got an entry signal yesterday, you watch the market open today, and you see that the market opens below where your stop price would be, you're just not going to trade because you would essentially get in and then immediately your stop would be hit and you'd have to exit. So we just assume that these trades don't happen at all. Um, and let me show that. So I've, I've got this highlighted here. I'm going to go up here to my filtered trade log and open this up. And it's opened on my different screen. Give me a second here. I'm going to bring this over. All right, so this is the filtered trade log. And you can see here, this showed every trade that gets filtered. And you can see um, right here, line number three. Uh, open price of 116.80 was past the protective stop price of 116.92. So the trade just never takes place, which is a good thing because it, it, I mean, it's how you would trade in real life. So that's one of the benefits of uh, using a, you know, something like Trading Blocks, the smart software that's well thought out. Um, so we have less trades there. So um, in you know, in, in doing this, it kind of pushed me to discover this. And I think the reason that I haven't ever um, discovered that this was happening before is that I usually I've tested and, and I trade now much longer term systems than something like this that trades in and out so frequently. Um, so even if you don't plan on trading a really short term, high term and over system, it may be good to do a little bit of testing with it because it'll help you it just gives you more data points to discover uh, to discover issues, see flaws, and um, really exercise all of the different options in your trading software and just um, kind of robustness testing of your code. Um, I think that's probably enough 
for today. I think in the next video, I'll go ahead and do the excursion analysis on our new code with our, um, with our stop in there, and we'll just kind of compare it to our original test and see what it looks like. I hope um, if you are watching these that you're getting something out of it. Uh, I'd be happy to hear some feedback, either good or bad, what, um, what I'm doing a good job of explaining, what isn't being explained well, and what you might want to see more of. So uh, that's it. Everybody take care and talk to you next time.